one of the worst limiting beliefs that I could have ever had because I'm just like there's no girl that's gonna look like this or do this or do that and it's just like there's tons of bitches out here that are gonna do much more than this hoe right here bro like wait, wake your ass up So I've always been a genuine person. I have hella love and admiration for my friends, for the majority of people on my mom's side of the family, and I've always just been a giver. I've always given and given and given with no problem at all. Um, I've always been hella empathetic as well, very empathetic, and I tended to take on people's problems like they were my own. And this got me in in a lot of emotional trouble, um, mainly with myself. And in situations like this, I would try to make up where other people lacked. And in doing this, I'd go above and beyond only for it to never be enough. And I would do this a lot more when I was younger. I don't really do this that much now. Or, you know, I've made the um, recent decision to stop doing this now. But when I was younger, I never had the um, information needed to realize that this had nothing to do with me and it had everything to do with them. So when I would, you know, go hard for someone, just do everything in my power that I could for someone and it still didn't work, I did not know that it wasn't my fault that it didn't work. And that also would mess me up a lot because it was just like, well, damn, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, I'm constantly looking at myself in the mirror, like, as me, when it, it it's not me, it's, it's the other person. And the more and more I would do things like this, I would get drained really quickly. But I, like I said, I didn't have the information needed to understand why I was being drained so much. I guess that's what energy vampires are. Like, I had a few, a few people that I can on two hands shoot probably more than two hands count that I've had I've had experiences with that have proven to be energy vampires and that that word is kind of funny but y'all know what I mean y'all get it like they would just take and take and take and then there was no way whatsoever that you could communicate with them that all they do is take without them making it feel like it was your fault and that shit fucking sucks. It, it it hurts, but it hurts even more when it comes from somebody like a parent. Like my dad is a narcissist and he was, he's definitely an energy vampire. He'll just call me on the phone. Well, not anymore. I don't talk to that nigga, but he'll call me or used to and would just bring up something hella controversial. He would just call me up on some dumb shit all the time just to like piss me off just to piss me off just to make me mad just to make me get into an argument with him and he's an aries i don't know what his other placements are it's probably all fucking fire but he's an aries and it makes a lot of sense to me now because i'm learning more and more about that kind of stuff but like that's the energy vampire right there i had another friend growing up who was an aries and he used to me and him were mutuals amongst a friend that i don't talk to anymore and we never talked about the girl like i didn't really i didn't care about what had happened but i'm just like he would call me up asking me about her like knowing me and her are not friends and i'm like he was also an aries i'm like bro what the fuck like leave me alone like you just I hate people who enjoy other people being annoyed or mad like they just they be saying shit just to make somebody mad like (sighs) that is so childish to me but basically I, I have been I have been surrounded by people like that for so long and I never had it within me to know That shit ain't got nothing to do with me. It's got everything to do with them. But with this being said, I used to be very prideful of my genuine tendencies. And when I say genuine tendencies, I'm still a genuine person. I just mean like my more so people pleasing tendencies. I think that's a better way to put it. So I used to pride myself on my people pleasing tendencies, even though I wasn't aware that I was people pleasing. And this is because for so long, I was taught that compliance was the only way that I could make people happy. And I mainly seen this dynamic in my family. Time and time again, like if they would want me to do something for them, I would always do it. If they wanted me to stop doing something for them, like I would always just do for other people. And there were, and this is, you know, actually now that I'm thinking about it, This was not with my mom. Like, (laughs) my mom would let me roam carefree. Like, I could do whatever I wanted with my style, with with everything. Um, But when it came to, like, older people 
or like my paternal side of the family. Like I felt like I was always shifting for somebody else's narrative, which wasn't cool. I hated it when people were angry with me. Like I would soak up people's trauma like a sponge. And I felt like, like I said, I felt like it was my job to fix everything. I'm like six, bro. I'm like eight. I'm like in middle school. Like there's not much that I really got control over. Yet so many, particularly adults, were putting these burdens on me. Like I'm the one that can actually do something about it. Like I remember my dad used to be like, he used to con- he used to try to convince me to well, I'm misspeaking. He used to want me to try to convince my mom to get him off child support or like convince me to live with him. And now that I'm older, like while I'm sure that he, you know, wanted did genuinely want me to live with him, I feel like the majority of it was because he was on child support and I know that he's always hated being on child support so like I would just be in the middle of this shit you know like just in the middle like my mom over here and my mom didn't even talk trash about him like he every time I would go to him or his house you know he would just constantly like throw shade at the maternal side of my family and I'm like nigga what what about that just because you don't like them what makes you think that I'm going to side with you on not liking them when I live with these people these people do not treat me the way that you uh, I'm sorry the way that they treat you you know so it's just like uh like it was just so fucking annoying like ew like that shit really used to piss me off bro and it was like I was never heard never heard, never even asked, you know, like, and even if I did speak up for myself and be like, all right, I don't like it when you talk bad about my mom, he would still do that shit. Like he still do that shit. So like, I'm saying this to say that like, I was subconsciously soaking all of this up because I'm just like in the middle trying to make both people happy. And it still doesn't seem like it's enough. Not even not, it really ain't had nothing to do with my mom, but you know, just with my dad, like, it's just like, damn, like we can't just talk about gymnastics. Like what the fuck? Like why we always got to talk about something mad controversial. So I think also with me having to go through a lot at such a young age, like not even it's beyond him in the situations that I was just saying, but I've always been really good at giving advice. Part of it is because I'm a Gemini, <laughs> you know, throw chakra, always active. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gemini gang. <laughs> that was ugly. <laughs> but um, I felt like it was my duty to be the healer at such a young age. And it was like, Why is so much burden being put on me to fix things that aren't even in my control? Why do I also feel like these things are in my control? I also feel like when it came to me getting in like middle school, friendships, romance, whatever, people knew that I was good at giving advice. I don't know how they knew it, but I remember the first best friend that I ever really had um, in middle school, like she was always going through a tough time. Like her house was fucked up. Like her family was messed up. Um, and I was just always being there for support, being there for comfort, being there for her in a plethora of ways. And I've written a plethora of poems about it in my book soon come, you know? Um, but I just remember always being treated like I was the healer. I'm like, damn, ain't nobody asked me like, (laughs) If I'm good, you know, but I feel like I have to be good for the sake of everybody else. Yeah, that was my main dilemma. Uh, I struggled with feeling guilty for setting boundaries because I was burdened with the idea that I could make or break someone's day. That stems from my childhood. That stems from family. Like, mm. yeah, that stems from family a lot because, (laughs) you know, like as a kid, like, if it, you at the family function and it's time to go home, your mom like, all right, go hug your whole family and say bye. And it's like, I don't want to hug these people. <laughs> like, It ain't because I don't love them or nothing. It's like, nigga, I just don't want to hug y'all. And it's like, we were always taught like we should feel bad for not wanting to, you know, simply hug somebody old in our family. It's like, bro, they smell like mothballs. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I still got love for you. I just don't want to hug you. Now that I'm thinking about it, like, old people like they give you these like they lips be moist and it's not from chapstick it's like from them constantly licking their lips like you know what I'm, y'all know what i'm saying y'all know y'all get it y'all get it but like you know we we would be like forced to like hug them and endure this 
long ass like embracement and it's like bro I do not I do not want to be here at this point in time (laughs) um those were times that that irritated me as a kid also I've always been very headstrong my grandparents were preachers and they would preach the same damn sermon every every week like same damn jokes all that shit and I was headstrong about the fact that like there wasn't shit wrong with being gay I don't know what and I and it wasn't like I had ever had these conversations with other people. Like, I don't even remember hearing anything against homosexuality in um, the church, but I just knew, like, it just wouldn't make sense for there to be anything wrong. Like, I felt like as long as it was love and as long as it was consensual, like, what's the problem? You know, I never I never had it, probably because my ass was queer. When it comes to stuff like that, I've always been hella headstrong. So, like anybody any man in my family for one there aren't many men in my family but they all find me difficult okay well all of them except my uncle randy man shout out to my uncle randy he ain't never given me no problems with none of that stuff whenever i did come to be um loud like when i had my breaking point and i would just be like yo like what you're doing is not making sense like here's here's why and like the thing about me is like i don't think people can really argue against me because the shit that I'd be saying be making sense. And the the main argument that other people would have when I was a kid is lower your voice. Like, why are you yelling at me? And it's like, they can't really say anything else. Like they can't provide an educated response. With that, like, you know, I would always be hushed. Well, not always, but I was hushed enough to where it was something that, you know, took a toll on me for not being able to speak my truth when I needed to speak my truth. And that was also a form of people pleasing, you know, just like, People being able to tell me to shut up. And because I'm a kid, like, I feel like I really got to shut up. And also, not even just that, but next time I see you, we're going to act like this never happened. And it's like, it's still on my mind. I still remember what you said back then. I'm not trying to hold on to it, but it deeply hurt me. Interesting, because recently I've been seeing on my TikTok for you page. Oh, I hate the, the 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 strong hold that TikTok has on our society. There's this white lady. I don't know her at. Y'all probably, hopefully somebody knows what I'm talking about, but somebody will be like, tell me about something that you do or don't teach your kids. I'm loosely saying this, that society thinks is weird or some shit like that. And she'll be like, my kids don't have to do anything they don't want to do. Like if I tell them to do the laundry and they say like, no, like we'll talk about it. Or if they say, hold on, that's fine. They'll get to it later. She's like, she lets her kids express their gender identity. She would let them get tattoos whenever they wanted to. Um, if they don't want to do something like hug their grandparents or give them kisses, like they don't have to. If that person makes you uncomfortable, you ain't got to be around them. And I really admire that shit because I feel like an understanding like that would have made a lot of a difference in the person that I was. I feel I feel like I would have had, uh, you know, everything happens in divine timing. So I'm not saying that I wish this had happened, but I'm saying in the event that I was in a more open environment, I was because of my mom, but had my family members been on that same, same wavelength, I feel like my upbringing would have been completely different. I would have been way more spiritual at oh, a way early age and just more unapologetically myself at you know, not, not having to wait till 20 to get, to get to where I am today. Um, you know, things happen in divine timing. There's nothing wrong with that, but I'm just saying like, I admire that. I also wanted to talk about the fact that my people pleasing tendencies stem from the fact that I am a Libra moon. And recently I have really been educating myself on what these things mean because I am hella interested, right? And they tell you so much about yourself. Libra moons tend to strive for balance and fairness, consider everyone else's emotions, and their main priority is uh, balance and peace, which makes a ton of sense. Um, There's also, you know, uh, Libra is like the, what is it, scale to, you know, the two scales. So it's important to have your shit balanced at all times. But growing up, I know mine was definitely unbalanced because like the second one said, consider everyone else's emotions. I would do that. But before I even considered my own, just me learning more about these, like the, my Zodiac signs, like my whole chart. I feel like I'll freak out when y'all see my chart. I'll put it right here. I'll I'll put a few of them up here (laughs) so y'all can see what y'all are working with. You know, another thing I wanted to talk about is my kind, has always been mistaken for weakness. I say this 
because this has just been happening since I was a kid. And I think that that is kind of obvious due to what I've kind of been talking about. But the first person I can vividly remember mistaking my kindness for weakness was my cousin on my dad's side. I've talked about him a plethora of times. If you've seen my shroom video, that's the one I read the poem about. He was just literally the worst person ever. <laughs> ever um like i was put in a plethora of bad situations because of him i had a lot of trauma because of the things that he introduced me to at such an early age that i shouldn't have been introduced to in the first place and not even just him but my paternal side was just fucked up like their priorities were not in the right place and i will i, I will say that to their faces that was my origin of where being mistreated and people pleasing being the response started. Then lovers started to abuse my kindness. And we're gonna skip middle school. Middle school was just a train wreck. <laughs> but let's talk about high school. Let's talk about the first girl I ever fell in love with. She was a Scorpio. Um, I try not to discriminate, but if somebody tells me they're a Scorpio, I just be like, ooh, yeah, nah, nah. If somebody tells me they're a Scorpio or if they're a Cancer, the answer is nah. I can't, I can't deal with water signs. I'm sorry. Like, I really can't deal with y'all. All of my friends are Pisces, and I'm starting to see the bad tendencies that they have. It's just too much. It's too much, you know? It's, it's too much. But she, my first love, manipulated the fuck out of me <laughs> and kind of made me feel like she was the one that... What poem did I write about her? Oh, there's a ton of poems about her. But there's one that says, watch me give you the world and it still isn't enough. So when it came to that ex, it was like she wanted me, but she only wanted me in a sense where she could have any girl she wanted and I would still always be there no matter what. And it was very abusive. It was a very toxic relationship. It wasn't even a relationship. She spent a year playing with my emotions only to date some girl I thought was my friend and then come back crying to me when the girl turned out to be an abusive. Um, so yeah, that was my <laughs> first experience with Scorpios. And then I went to college, found another Scorpio who first name started with the same letter as my ex. They had the exact same birthday, crazy, <laughs> same day, same signs. And it was just same skin tone, like they just, same hair, like they just, it just reminded me too much of my ex. And I was attracted to both of them terribly. Like I was, oh God, I was like very head over heels for both of them. Um, then the girl after that was a cancer, <laughs> manipulative as fuck, gaslit me the entire time. I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole, but like just, I had, um, I had a, a theme going on in my relationships. I didn't realize why I kept being dealt women that did things like this. It has taken me until now to realize why I was put in those kinds of situations because I know that even when shitty things happen, there's always a reason behind it. You know what? It definitely has something to do with me because it's like, okay, you know, these people are abusive. I'm allowing this abuse though. I think those lessons were just trying to tell me to listen to the first time. Like the first time somebody says something, don't ignore it. Because I've had a habit of ignoring the signs. I also had the limiting belief that um, I, I was the type of person that if I find somebody attractive and like, you know, like we're talking or whatever, I'm like, damn, like there's no other girl that's going to be this fine. Like I was the kind of person that thought of like that, you know, and that was like such a limiting belief. One of the worst limiting beliefs that I could have ever had, because I'm just like, there's no girl that's going to look like this or do this or do that. And it's just like, there's tons of bitches out here that are going to do much more than this hoe right here, bro. Like, wake your ass up. And yes, I have had all these bad experiences, but I never let that dictate how I treated other people. Now, there are hurt people who hurt people, but I've never been the type of hurt person to go and hurt other people. Like, I never thought that that shit was okay. I never thought that, you know, you get a pass just because your ex hurts you. Like, no, that's not, that's not the move. And that is the number one, one of the top reasons why I have been trying to establish better boundaries. And now we are on the last chapter of this video and it is entitled, Now It's Time To Be A Bitch. <laughs> uh, recently, I have, like I just said, been establishing way more boundaries and it has been life-changing. It's been really good. Like it's it's been feeling great to tell people about themselves <laughs> and like not even in a nasty way just like yo like bro you be over here too much like 
bro, like, I don't like it when you do this. Like, this does not make me feel safe. This does not make me feel comfortable. And it's been like, Shit has damn near been everybody in my life that I've had to really talk to recently. Example, I've been making a lot of new friends also, but one person in particular was trying to like, she was trying to date me, right? And first thing first that I should have took note as a red flag was the fact that when I asked her how she found me on Instagram, she told me that she found me through my loctician. And my loctician is the girl to do my my hair. Shortly after that, she slipped up and said she found me from my YouTube channel. And now meeting people, I would prefer they not know about my channel. And that's only because like through that, people can get this preconceived idea of who I am. And I don't really want that to dictate how people treat me or view me because a lot of people tend to treat me like I'm this manic pixie dream girl if you don't know what that is I'll put the definition somewhere on the screen but I've always been treated like I'm the manic pixie dream girl even before my YouTube like people kind of just treated me like I was famous and that was just them setting me up for this but you know like it it really got in the way of who I was as a person because when I turned out to not be what everybody expected me, or, you know, not even that, when I turned out to be a fucking human, when I turned out to have good days and bad days, you know, like, people were like, oh, I don't, I don't like that. And the last example I wanted to say was people thinking that I'm a shaman. Um, Somebody in my, my DMs recently told me that they tripped off a tab of acid. I know I've said that I've done it, but I didn't say, hey, you should go out there and do it. But this person is in my DMs and they're just like manically texting me, like DMing me. Like it's just so many messages back to back to back. It was like, it was really chaotic. And I was just like, bro, like they were asked, they were telling me that they were like freaking out and like asking me for help. And I'm like, bro, like, who do you think I am? Like people tell me that I'd be a great mentor and I'm pretty sure I would, but it's like, fuck, like people treat me like I'm not still learning things myself, you know, like, like I'm not a human, like people treat me like a manic pixie dream girl and things like that irritate me. Cause it's like, I got a good grip of the answers, you know, like I got a, I got a, I feel like I got a good amount for my age, but I don't have everything. I don't have all of the answers. I am forever learning. I don't mind helping people, but like, I think that I'm going to have to start a master course if people really want me to be like, one-on-one with them and their personal experience. Tell me if y'all think that's a good idea. Like, if you want me to be one-on-one and help you out throughout your personal experiences, let me know, because that might be a good idea. Just things like that, they kind of upset me because I'm just like, don't trip off acid. Like, if you're going to act like, if you're 15, don't trip off acid. Like, what the the hell? Like, this has nothing to do with me. Like, people just putting their problems onto me as if they're my own. And it's like, for so long, I had absorbed them and now I'm choosing not to, you know, and it's, uh, it's just a lot. It's just a lot sometimes. Troy says I need to be more selfish. And Troy is my tarot reader. He's a great tarot reader. I will put his information in the description below and in the pinned comment if I remember to. But Troy is a great tarot reader and I just got a reading from him the other day. And he was like, yeah, you need to be more selfish. You need to establish better boundaries. I asked him about love and I asked him about friendships and me. I have never been the type of person to ask about my love life in a tarot reading. Like it's always career, YouTube, success, brown girl almighty, the brand, everything else. <laughs> because I'm very I'm a very independent person, but I was like, you know, I want to love learn about I want to learn about love today. <laughs> Troy, like let me know what's up. What's up with these people I got in my lives? And he was just like, you need to be more selfish. Establishing boundaries will be your best friend at the moment. And he he's he's so right. So correct. Um, and it's it's funny actually, cause I think it's so backwards, you know, we've always been taught to not be selfish. We've been taught to give and give and give, and we were never equipped with the tools we needed to learn the difference between the people we can and can't give to. I think everybody needs to be a little selfish, you know, like there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So here I am. I'm learning these things at 20 years old still young, still the best thing that I could have decided to do for myself. I I applaud me for doing these things, you know, because they're hella important. Um, but yeah, so this is the year of self. Um, and I think that's about it. Also, I've been looking into YouTube videos, doing more videos like this that talk about like, 
just being set with with oneself like I think that's so important and I don't think we talk about it enough because I think I'm fucking dope you know so it's like why wouldn't I want to spend more time with me you know so yeah um I really hope that this helped you in some kind of way, shape, or form. Remember to be a bitch if you need to be, because ain't nothing wrong with that. Be selfish if you need to be, because there ain't nothing wrong with that either. Um, But yeah, I have a sound healing meditation to go to, and I am so excited. I'm going to start dancing around. I'm so excited. Um, But yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Always remember to comment, like, subscribe, same as always, and you guys will see me in the next video. The more that I learn about like just spirituality and like myself in general, I really come to the deep realization that I was literally meant for this. Like my name is Trinity. Like my parents kind of, my parents, well, my dad especially was really spiritual and my mom is as well. She is more so now than what she was before I was born, I think. But like, I feel like everything was very intentional, especially with me. So my name is Trinity. I am a Gemini son, Gemini, uh, wait yeah I'm a Gemini sun a Gemini rising a Libra moon I have other Gemini placements I think I got like four or five Gemini placements but with that being said I resonate most with the throat chakra and I like to talk as you can see from my YouTube channel and this podcast